Welcome to Bellingham Voices. I'm Marie Marchand, your host. Today we have three guests. Bellingham City Council Member Jack Weiss, City Planning Director Rick Seppler, and Emma Burnfield, who's the Rental Registration Specialist. Our first guest, Jack Weiss, has been on the Bellingham City Council since 2008. You've decided that it's going to be your last term and last year on the City Council, and I'm wondering, as you look back on your two terms as an elected official, what are some of your favorite accomplishments? Well, there's been quite a few different things that we've had an opportunity to work on over, over the last eight years. The ones I really appreciate, number one is, is BTV10 specifically. One of the very first things that uh, Stan Snap, Barry Buchanan, and myself uh, did when we were first elected in, in 2008 was to uh, help expand the transparency of our city uh, council meetings. And uh, what we did was we, we uh, uh, increased the, the, the airtime uh, from, uh, to, to include the afternoon sessions and to do it live and also to have it available for repeat tapings. The afternoon sessions are very important because they, uh, it's really where our legislation is actually formed and I think people can see that. The other things that, that uh, I, I personally am very happy about is uh, the formation of the Transportation Commission, which is an advisory body. Uh, uh, Barbara Ryan and I, she was a former city council member, we, were, we worked very hard on getting that set up. And it helps advise uh, our transportation policies and, and specific projects that, that happen in the community. Um, the other thing that uh, that the Transportation Commission did immediately was to create the Bicycle Master Plan and the Pedestrian Master Plan. Those inform uh, much of our spending when it comes to transportation planning. And I think that people have seen a lot of improvements over the last few years because of it. And, and very good ones too. It helps, helps for safety, it helps for access, and it helps try and get people out of their cars when, when they have the alternatives to do so. Um, along the lines of transportation as well is the Transportation Benefit District. I was part of a four to three vote on the City Council to put that to the voters uh, a few years back and the voters responded very favorably by 58 percent margin uh, to, to establish a, uh, a tax uh, that would allow for uh, in restoring but Sunday bus service and also to provide money for uh, for improving our arterial streets by by putting overlay asphalt on on streets that need it and then uh, finally like I had mentioned before to uh, to help with the, the bicycle and pedestrian master plans mm -hmm. so those are those are really favorable transportation things and one last thing was was uh, a few years back uh, many years before it was really uh, I think uh, known within the within the country about the Keystone Pipeline and, and about the problems with the Alberta tar sands issue, uh, I was able to uh, get the council to unanimously endorse two resolutions that that uh, kind of spelled out how Bellingham felt about the Alberta tar sands and the the environmental impacts associated with it, and I'm I'm very proud about that and. It really did create a, uh, a lot of controversy, I think, within Canada that a, an American city would, would take such a stance. And I, I felt really good about that. Those are some diverse things. Yes. That must be fun to be on the city council and, and get to um, examine all of those different issues with different breadth and depth. I'm wondering about social justice. I know that that's been a really important part of your life. and. I'm wondering how it manifests itself in your policy decision making at the council level. Yeah, social justice, I, I look at social justice in a couple different ways. I, I also include environmental justice too. The social justice is to make sure that, that things for people are, are done in the right way and that, that people are treated fairly. Environmental justice is to make sure that our entire community, including our environment, is, is dealt with uh, in a responsible way. Uh, the environment obviously helps with the quality of life and the amenities that we, we, so, we so value uh, you know, within, within Bellingham. Mm -hmm. um, so I look at it that way. 
for me, I, I guess I have a philosophy that I really do believe that we need to have fairness uh, in whatever we do as far as our decisions. And I personally, I try to weigh, when I try to make decisions, I try to weigh uh, what is the best uh, decision for the entire community. Not a parochial one that might be specifically geared to a neighborhood, although that sometimes might be the best decision for the, for the community. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, just what is the best decision? And sometimes it, you know, it's trying to weigh a developer's interest versus a neighborhood interest or uh, a business interest versus uh, something that might have to do with environmental regulation. Uh, you know, you just, it's a balancing act, and you just try and do the best that you can. Mm -hmm. um, along those lines, I, I feel like there's, you know, there's a couple things that, that I have done that have tried to help that. Uh, most recently, and the thing that we're working on this year, is uh, to try and develop incentives for growing Bellingham in places where, where it's really, I think, responsible to grow and grow, such as our in our urban villages or in other infill uh, techniques, such as within our existing neighborhoods, instead of trying to grow on the outside of the town or worse, to try and increase the size of Bellingham into the farmlands, which is something we definitely don't want to do. Mm -hmm. Through the incentive program, we're, we're creating, um, we're going to create incentives this year that will allow developers uh, the proper price signals to say, you know, it's better to grow in the city center or it's better to grow in Old Town or in Samish area instead of, you know, building out on the outskirts of town. Mm -hmm. And that that has a lot of advantages. It, it spells, you know, it tells, we don't have to build as much in the way of roads or utility um, extensions and that ultimately becomes cheaper we don't have to have fire or police response out into the outskirts if we already have it uh, within within the town. Those are advantages that then spell into the social issues that you're talking about, um, where we have more money to be able to provide for people uh, uh, on a whole series of other types of programs that we we currently do within the city. Mm -hmm. So that's important. Great. What's the most challenging thing about being an elected official here in Bellingham? Probably a couple things. One is, what when, the one thing for me personally was that in 2008, that was when the recession was really kicking in. I was hoping to come to council uh, in 2008 with the opportunity to have a good enough budget where we could go and continue to do really, really good things for the community. The challenging part was that uh, we ended up having to cut our city staff by about 10%. We had to slash every program uh, to the bone. Uh, and that was hard. That was really, really hard. And uh, the, you know, we're starting to bounce back now. Things are getting better. But um, that was, for me, it was a missed opportunity. I would have loved to have done that. The other real challenge is the length of time that it takes to get anything done. Um, you know, one of, the, one of the projects that I worked on really hard was to go and just put two lines down Northwest Avenue for bike lanes. It took two years to get that done. And it was um, not only two years, but $2 million mm -hmm. because we had to go and improve all of the different sidewalk uh, intersections where, with curb cuts and uh, to provide for ADA accessibility important stuff, but it took a long time to go and just do something which you think would be real simple, mm -hmm. paint two lines. Mm -hmm. You're well known for your work in helping to start rental registration and safety inspection here in Bellingham, and it's in the midst of coming to fruition right now. We're going to talk more about it on this show later. <clears throat> and I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about the history of how that program came to be. I guess it was about 11 years ago, there was a, a strong push by the city council, led by Barbara Ryan, um, to, to try and address some of the rental issues that, that uh, they had, the council at the time had been hearing. Um, you know, that there was substandard housing going on, that there was really um, an unregulated industry out there. And uh, that... They had an initial discussion. They had a very large uh, meeting at the, Belling the, the ferry terminal. And uh, 
a lot of property owners came out and really um, were very dismissive of the whole idea. But the problem didn't go away. And about seven years ago, I, I picked it up when I came on the council and I, I uh, brought it to council a number of times and um, I wasn't successful for, successful for quite a while, but I continued bringing it up. It was, a, a, it was, I guess, last fall where finally I think that the, the uh, efforts of a lot of people in the community trying to educate council members um, and my continued efforts, I think what we ended up doing was convincing a majority of the council that this was a good idea. And what we wanted to do was to create a, a program where we would register, register all rental units and the registration is important because if we don't know where, where rentals are, if you, um, if somebody calls and says my house is on fire or my unit's on fire and they come to the place, the fire department doesn't really know if there's one or two or three units on the property. If we have a registration program, that information's known. Or if a police comes to respond, uh, they'll know that there's two units and they're not knocking on the wrong door. So registration is very important. Inspection is the other facet of the program, and that's very important. The idea is that we want to try and get all housing units to meet a minimum level, a minimum standards of health and safety. And that would include such things as plumbing, electrical, heating, uh, make sure that structurally that the, the, uh, the place is, is sound and it's, it's worthy of living in. Uh, we have numerous reports of, of houses that, that uh, people are renting out right now where that's not the case, where they're really living in substandard conditions. And it's usually affecting the people that have the least in the way of resources to be able to complain about it and to try and get it fixed. And even if they did, if they had to go and move, uh, there's extremely low vacancy percentage in the, in the community where it's really, really hard to go and find a replacement rental if you had to move. So our, our intent is to try and improve the housing stock of, of the community and to try and get that uh, so that everybody, if they're renting, that they know that they have a really good rental to, to, uh, to rent. Mm -hmm. um, another facet of it is education. We want to educate tenants. We also want to educate the property owners too about not only the program, but also some of their other rights and their responsibilities associated with renting. And that's going to be all part of it. The one thing that I'm really, really proud of is that the program is, is inexpensive. It's going to cost a, a, a little less than $4 per unit per month. And when property owners are charging anywhere from $700 to $1,500 per unit per month, $4 is, is a pretty good deal. And uh, I think we did a really good job, and I really applaud Rick, uh, Rick Seppler, our planning director, for, you know, for um, steering this this, uh, this ship into the proper direction and getting and getting a really good program. And um, I look forward to seeing his interview later. What has been the most rewarding part of this job? I would say it's the interactions that I've had uh, with with the staff people, with the department heads, with the two mayors I've had an opportunity to work with, with uh, the 12 council members I've had a chance to work with over the, over the course of eight years, uh, and particularly the, the number of the scores of people, the hundreds of people I've, I've had an opportunity to, to discuss city issues and their feelings in the community. Uh, whether it's neighborhood groups or businesses or organizations, I've had some great interactions with them. And I guess the other reward is every once in a while being successful in some of the projects that I've done. Mm -hmm. What's next for you? <clears throat> Boy, um, I really don't know, Maria. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I have had a number of different careers on purpose uh, throughout my life. And I, I do it for a few years and then I stop and then do something else. And I typically, the way I operate is that I just, I'll stop doing whatever I'm doing and then just let another opportunity come up and then I'll, I'll plug in. Um, most of my life I've done service in the, service for community purposes. And I hope to continue doing that, whatever it might be. But um, a year from now, 
I will be doing something very, very different. I'm sure it'll be very good, but I don't know what it is. Wonderful. Thank you for joining us today, Jack. Sure, Marie. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll return to the program in just a few moments after this message. Welcome back. Our next guest is Rick Seppler, Director of Planning and Community Development. Rick came to the City of Bellingham from the City of Port Townsend last October. Welcome to the show, Rick. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so Rick, the City Council's process with rental registration was well underway when you arrived. From your perspective, what are some opportunities and challenges associated with implementing the program? Uh, in general, when Council makes a policy decision, it's our role to find the best way to implement it with the least amount of impact to the members of the community and still achieve the end. In this instance, for rental registration and inspection, it's pretty clear. Council was very concerned about safety and very concerned about the broad inventory of rental units we have. Um, in doing that, we had to assess um, how to uh, get our arms around the population, meaning the, the 14,000 rental units that are out there, get them registered in short order with least amount of cost and least amount of hassle to the property owners, and set ourselves up for inspection. Um, inspection is the key component because we will be going through all of the rental units over a three-year period to ensure they meet minimum life safety requirements. And to do that, um, we need to use our new permitting system, which is going to be coming online in uh, less than a year at this point, because they're intricately uh, related for efficiency's sake. How is the city going to determine which units to start out with with inspections? Um, consistent with the enabling ordinance, we divide the city roughly into thirds, and we will likely start in the areas that have had the most complaints, um, because it's best to address those sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. And when will inspections begin? Inspections will likely begin in the first quarter of 16. Um, the reason for that is we need to go through our registration process, which starts July 1st and ends August uh, 1st, then follow up, because there'll be a number of folks who don't register, um, some because of omission, they just weren't aware of it, or the letters didn't reach them, or, or they uh, had confusion in the requirements, and others because they chose not to register. Um, it'll take us about three months to follow up on each of those instances, track down the folks, and get them on board. Once we have a complete inventory of what's registered, we'll begin our inspections, and the inspections will be about 2,700 units per year. In terms of enforcement, how is the city going to handle any illegal dwelling units that it discovers? Um, it's very important for us to make this program work, to be efficient, and uh, to follow up on all the illegal units. That said, uh, the very first step is getting a complete registration inventory. Um, if at the end of August folks say, well, you should go enforce on this unit because they're not on the roster, again, they may be a unit that just didn't get notice or unaware of the requirement or confused as to whether they had to register or not. So it'll take us about three months to work our way through that. Once we have our arms around it, we've got our population defined. We have a number of strategies we've developed, um, everything from working with neighborhood associations to using our GIS, Geographic Information System, to locate where the areas of most complaints are, and actually we might have to do block-by-block block work um, to ensure we can get uh, broad compliance on the illegal units. Uh, we'll be coming forward to Council very shortly with our draft program for enforcement, more for information than approval. It's an implementing act. But we do describe those strategies and we'll make that available online. Mm -hmm. um, our commitment is to fully enforce the ordinance. If there's somebody out there watching today who's a tenant living in an unsafe situation and they're not getting an adequate response from their landlord, what can they do today to get some help from the city? Absolutely should call the city. Contact us. Um, they can file a concern. Uh, we can uh, uh, keep their anonymity 
um, so there's no retaliation as long as we can. Uh, if they're concerned about retaliation, they can go through their neighborhood association and contact us. And uh, we take those matters very seriously. Issues of life safety are the number one priority for us. So should we identify a circumstance from either a complaint or our own observation through inspection that it's fundamentally unsafe, folks won't be there. I mean, that's the one we act immediately on. Absent that, there are a number of conditions that can be remedied. And our strategy is to have the property owner or management company enter into a resolution plan. A resolution plan is a mutual agreement that gives us a defined time frame to meet the requirements that are present. Again, those aren't life safety. Life safety is immediate. These are things that are relatively minor but need to be brought into code compliance. Thank you for your time today. Thank you for having me. And we'll be right back after this message with our next guest. Welcome back to Bellingham Voices. Our next guest is Emma Burnfield, Rental Registration Specialist in our Planning Department. Welcome to Bellingham Voices, Emma. Thank you, Marie. How long have you been with the city? I came on to the city back in March, so I've only been here for a couple months. Mm -hmm. And as your title suggests, you specifically work with the Rental Registration Program, is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. We recently had Jack Weiss on the program and also Rick Seppler, Director of Planning, and they gave us a little bit of the history and an overview of the program. And what I'm hoping you could share with our viewers are some of the details of the program, such as who needs to register and who doesn't need to register and by when. So the people that are needing to register are property owners who have rental property within Bellingham city limits. Uh, so we're talking everything from single family homes, apartment complexes, duplexes, the ADU in the backyard. If you're renting it out, uh, we want you to register. As far as people who are exempt from the program, um, if you've got property out in the county, it's not going to apply to you. We're also looking at properties like hotels and motels, um, any kind of transitional housing, nursing homes, um, housing for religious orders, those kind of things, they're going to be exempt from the program. Mm -hmm. And how much does it cost to register for somebody? It's going to depend on the number of units in the property. So if you've got a property with 1 to 20 units, you're looking at $10 per unit. If you've got something with 21 or more, we're looking at $8 per unit. Um, and I think it's important to clarify that that is per unit per property. We're not looking at your entire rental portfolio. You do need to look at each individual property. So say you have a few, maybe you have a duplex, that's going to be $10 per unit. But you also have a big apartment complex, that's going to be $8 per unit. Mm -hmm. Okay. What is the website where people can go to to get more information? We've got our program website up. It's www.cob.org slash rentals. And that is chock full of information about the program. Um, we've broken it down into sections. So if you're a property owner, you can find all the pertinent information there. If you're a tenant, there's a whole section for you as well. And what's your phone number? It is 360-778-8361. Uh, and is there anything else you'd like people to know, pertinent information about the program as it's emerging? I think the biggest thing to know is kind of the deadlines at this point. Uh, we're anticipating registration opening up on July 1st. You'll be able to register in person at City Hall or online um, at the Rentals website. Mm -hmm. 
Wonderful. Well, thank you for being with us today. Thank you so much, Marie. Thank you for joining us for Bellingham Voices. We'll see you next time.